big with two G's. I'm gonna repeat that. That's big with two G's. We back with another episode of the Big Umbrella Podcast. That's big with two G's, the Big Umbrella Podcast. I'm gonna repeat that. That's big with two G's, the Big Umbrella Podcast. And we got Khalil Nash. How's it going? What's going on? We finally got you on, like I was talking about earlier. Yeah. I actually was, we already started talking maybe two months ago before, yeah. but everything fell into place and right. we're here now. Yes. And where exactly are we? We are at R&D's Ice Cream Shop. I heard that R&D ice cream shop. Off Garnett Avenue in PB, black owned business. Um, yeah, it's a family ties. <laughs> For sure. So you grew up here in San Diego? Yes, born and raised. Okay, what part of San Diego you grew up in? I grew up in City Heights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right off the 805, right by all the freeways. Okay, <laughs> yeah. what was it like growing up nice. for you in City Heights? Uh, it was, <clears throat> you know, I... I didn't spend as much time in City Heights as I had in uh, like just moving around doing music and being in everywhere from, you know, Southeast mm. to uh, to La Jolla. So, mm. <laughs> you know, I was kind of all over the place uh, growing up. Mm. All my friends would live in like Kensington or like you know, near SDSU and things like that. So that's kind of, I don't know. That's kind of how I came up. Was it harder for you moving around with all your different friends and kind of basically create, establish a, a solid friendship or that was beneficial for you to have friends all around? It was beneficial to have, have friends all around because, you know, it, uh, it was just diverse. Like I grew mm -hmm. up around diverse kids and, um, diverse communities and so I, I see it as a plus mm -hmm. yeah. for sure what inspired the music Ooh. and the style yeah <laughs> well I uh, you know I the music was inspired by like James Brown and all the greats and watching Michael Jackson you know growing up seeing the greats doing what they do just uh, inspired me mm. and made me go I like I want to do that like that seems cool yeah. <laughs> you know um and then the fashion it's just the same came same sort it. of situation came with it yeah. exactly exactly so I've, I've always liked to dress up and uh when I was younger it was costumes and now my costumes have become just my Everyday clothes wear. <laughs> yeah, exactly mm -hmm. yeah but you said you went to like a um a performance School. A performing arts school, mm. yeah. So even even my elementary school was kind of focused on the arts and music. I went to Oak Park Elementary, um, and uh, another school, Limburg Schweitzer, and then from there I went to SCPA for middle school and high school. So it goes from sixth grade to twelfth, mm. um, and so you know that is the school that really. Um, Helped me get better as just a creative person and helped me discover what I even wanted to do in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, so there I majored in musical theater and I was in the school plays and musicals and, and things like that. And was taking dance class and musical theater and learning about, you know, everything from the start of musical theater up till now and all this history and my music fundamentals and teaching me how to read music. Uh, yeah, that school is, has helped me become a very round uh, artist. Mm -hmm. So with you going to the school and all that, like from there, you, you originally wanted to do acting. Yeah, yeah. I was originally doing <clears throat> acting. I, you know, my mom has been with me the whole way and she would take me up to L.A. and do different you know, auditions for commercials or TV shows. Like I auditioned for some pilot for a TV show that was produced by the people of Mega Mind. So it was like, at, it was cool. It was like, how old were you Oh, jeez. You could say I young. was probably like eight. There we go. Nine, mm -hmm. something like that. I was super young. But, uh, you know, at a certain point, I, uh, I lost my voice and you know due to puberty mm. <laughs> so, 
so it really helped me get into instruments. And in the fifth grade, I took a guitar class and mm. um, it was <clears throat> only for one. Actually, it was only for like a few months. But then uh, from there, I just struck a chord. It, from there, I just started learning on YouTube, mm. you know, so that's where I learned how to do a lot of the things that I did or do musically speaking, um, because they didn't have a major for that in SCPA. Right. So a lot of the stuff that I had to learn was just through research. Right. <laughs> so even learning guitar and things like that. Yeah. And I've had mentors along the way, like uh, this lady, Francesca Valley. When I would really get stuck, I would go to her and she would help clear things up mm. as far as guitar is concerned or songwriting or really anything. 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 She was, yeah. So she's been a great mentor of mine and she has her own company called Bug Bite. Um, and they offer online classes for vocals or, you know, it's really kind of geared around what you're interested in yeah. um, as an artist. Okay. So it's really awesome. Yeah. With you basically performing your whole life, do you feel like you had a time to be a kid? You know, my kid experience was what I was doing because that was what I wanted to mm. do. I didn't have a whole bunch of friends. I didn't have, I didn't really start hanging out with like friends or going over to people's houses, like really like that until like seventh grade, you know, I, uh, that I don't know. You didn't feel comfortable going over there? No, it was just because I chose to focus on music and that's what I right. ended up finding. I've, I found my passion. I mm -hmm. found out, you know, what, what I was put on this earth to do. And, you know, it didn't kids and hanging out and, didn't really concern me until my mom was like, you need to get out of the house. <laughs> like you need to go do something. So, you know, I spent <clears throat> my little 10th grade uh, summer going out to college parties. Uh -huh. and, and 10th grade. Know, yeah. Yeah. 10th grade. And, you know, I wouldn't drink or do smoke. We, I, you know, didn't do any of that. I would just go for the experience just to be around <clears throat> people and just something in an atmosphere that I, you know, wasn't in on a day to day basis. Right. So, it was fun. Mm. It was fun. So, sure. um, you know, yeah, I've just always been focused on music and, you know, it, it takes a lot of work to to be successful in the level of successful that I I want to achieve. Right. So therefore, that takes a lot of sacrifice. But, you know, when I was growing up, it didn't feel like sacrifice because that's what I wanted to be fun. doing. You know? Yeah, exactly. It wasn't until I started developing, <laughs> you know like real close friends and things like that did I like, you know, but even then they were all centered around music, you know, and I met them through the open mic scene. I went to this place called Lestat's West um, off Adams Avenue and, you know, I made my best. Open mic. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So. That was um, the first one? No, okay. actually my first one was Java Joe's. It's, uh, it's not there anymore actually relocated to old town mm -hmm. but um but yeah that's that was my first open mic at java joe's and from there you know my mom would take me to a couple here and there how'd that first one go though you know it was good yeah because you've been performing forever yeah yeah <laughs> it was good because they uh you know the music community here in san diego is very supportive and um you know I was a kid and I think most of the people in the audience were a little bit of an older crowd, but mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've, I've always received love from the community, which is uh, a blessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That so. made me wonder like how, how the shows that you performed at here, how, like you said, you always get love from them. Is there any of that you felt like you didn't get that same love? <clears throat> Cause Honestly, what I hear from a lot of people that perform in San Diego, yeah. I don't know if it's because of the club scene they perform at or what I the case know. may be. I but know they what like you're um, that's not. They say they don't. They don't really bring people out for them. Yeah, that's what. But they, they want them to pay. Right. I. I. Uh, I mean. Yeah, there's a lot of pay to play situations. If that's what you're referring mm. to, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it's it's definitely like you know you just got to pay your dues in some way or another. You right. know, sometimes. But you know, like after you reach a certain point, you definitely shouldn't be doing pay to play shows. Right. Um, you know, but getting in front of a crowd and if you don't have any other way of getting it, like that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do, you know, and it's, you just look at it as paying your dues because, uh, karma, 
karma comes back around. Yeah, 100 so, percent You know, you reap what you sow. Definitely. So with you now doing like how you said, like you always perceive this love and stuff like that. Is there anything else you're looking to broaden off to? Like from you always get you're getting the love for the music wise. Right. You initially started off like you wanted to do acting. Do you right. still want to touch back on that? I do. I do see myself going back and doing some acting, whether that's commercials or TV shows or maybe maybe not TV shows. That's that's a big commitment. But also, I mean, movies are, too. But, mm. you know, depends on where, where I'm at in life. But I definitely do want to get get back into acting in some way, shape or form. Mm. So that's definitely in my future. What was that performance for you? Like, I believe it was UCSD. Oh, yeah, that was. You know, other than NAM, which is this uh, music conference that goes on every year, it's like the biggest music conference. Um, that was probably UCSD was the most uh, professional, probably like, you know, if I were on tour and I was a bigger artist, like that was my first, ex like that was one of my first experiences of really having that. Like mm -hmm. it was, it was official. Like we had to get on a, a fright elevator to go down to the stage oh, and dang, like, like you said it was official it was official official like they <laughs> it was so official they gave me my own door to come out of yo it was <laughs> it was incredible mm. and being able to be backed by uh, another local band called heaping teaspoon um they write their own music and they have they're like the free nationals low-key like you know like All i'm like anderson pack and they're yeah. like the free nationals kind of yeah. kind of type relationship um and so you know and then in addition to uh my background singer mary corso uh you know that was incredible i uh they're incredible musicians so it helped me do my job better mm. <laughs> so not having to worry about my band and, and things like that very very tight but it was yeah if I wanted the rock star experience and getting to play on a big stage and the whole shebang, that was that was it. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. would you consider your flow of music? My flow of music, referring to genre right. or uh, uh, I, I've gone through phases. Mm -hmm. um, I started off doing indie rock and singer songwriter type music. And um, then from there, I, uh, I did bedroom pop, which is like kind of like lo-fi mixed with like DIY artists um and you know now i'm kind of doing more r&b and soul but it kind of i do projects honestly kind of partially that way mm -hmm. so um you know it's dependent on kind of what i'm what i'm inspired by at right. the time but you know i mean i play live instruments and things like that so i feel like that's definitely influenced like me just being a doing all these different genres and things like right. that. And, um, yeah. So at the moment, this R&B. Is that funk. one of your favorite? Yeah. yeah. R&B one of your favorite? <laughs> yeah. For sure. You know, I mean, like, that's what I grew up on. And at a certain point, I started to develop my own little venture out, and like listen to different kinds of music. And so my mom introduced me to all this other music because I was introduced to like more modern kind of rock. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom introduced me to like Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains and like all these, all these great artists from the nineties and the seventies and everywhere in between. So, you know, um, I definitely have drawn influences from a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. So what inspired you to then start taking this more serious as far as you being an official artist? What was the turning point? Like, okay, I can keep on doing this or I can take this route. Honestly, if that was the case. There, there wasn't really a case, but there was kind of like, I mean, I guess there was like a version of the case. Like during, uh, before the pandemic, I was going to school for business administration. I was going to Mesa College and, you know, I went to City College, but I was doing that whole track. And then the pandemic hit and, you know, before lockdown, they gave you the option to drop all your classes without any uh, consequence. Mm. And um, I was like, I'm going to take advantage of right. this. I'm going to take advantage of this the uh, this time because I don't know. I, I don't know what's about to I don't know what's about to happen. Nobody mm. knew what was getting ready to happen. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do. And pursue my passion because. 
this is this is it. I was already pursuing it, but like I was like, let me just really really grind. Mm -hmm. Um, so I so I uh, got I got a lot done over the pandemic. Yeah, you know. I know you mentioned your mom a lot. Was your dad in your life growing up? Yeah, yeah. He uh, he's definitely supplied me with all the tools and equipment that I've needed, and mm -hmm. given me advice on you know his experiences in the industry and. He's, <laughs> you know, we went to go see the uh, the NWA movie a few years ago, yeah. and my dad is uh, is a DJ, and he used to tour with Snoop and Dre, and yeah. he was, you know, he was in it. So he he was watching the movie, sitting back, like you know, like this remind me of a scene that I was in. Yeah, exactly. So he's looking at me like, "You sure you want to do this?" And I still was like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially because I was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing rap, you know, right. I'm not doing hip hop, so, um, you know, it was like it's kind of we not on the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Field. I'm like this is this is a different this is a different route, right? You know, this is doing business with kind of different people, but, you know, I still find myself <clears throat> back in those circles, anyways. Like those, it like you know, it it's uh it's all, I don't know the people. The the I mean everybody from the rock to the hip hop community has em embraced me, you know. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, because of who my parents are and the relationships and things like that has just like that's who I'm around and mm -hmm. doing business with, anyways. But it's you know not on that like <laughs> degree or right, intensity. Right. I have very loving people in my corner, so mm -hmm. I wasn't really tripping. <laughs> What gets you through those tough times when it's like, as far, even no matter what it is, it has to do with music, life, period. Just what gets you through tough times? Music. Mm. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's the most inspiring. It's it's one of the most inspiring things. I mean, you know, like that's my therapy. Mm -hmm. I can write down my words. I can speak what's on my mind and reflect on those things and so it's just yeah music is very therapeutic mm -hmm. now with you going through with the acting and the music since a child how have you been able to basically keep your mental health at a at a level a steady pace <clears throat> if that Ooh. is where it's at i don't know where it's at <laughs> there's been tough times like you know there's definitely been i i don't know i've had my my share of like you know, it it can be tough trying to balance things when you're trying to really make a name for yourself, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, I don't know. I just, I just breathe through it all and I just focus on my goal and I, like, it just doesn't. The, the hard times don't phase me mm. and I'm a positive optimistic person so you know even when times are hard I I'm optimistic yeah because I know that you know God has a plan and I just trust and whatever happens in between I just know I'm gonna get there no matter what happens mm. I got like that's if I'm destined for something it's it's gonna happen Right. You know, I've just got to be putting all of my intentions towards making it happen yeah. and doing that. For sure. That was good, actually. Right. What was one of your favorite shows? And have you performed out of San Diego? I've done some things out of San Diego. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up uh, doing this thing called the school tour. Mm -hmm. So I would go around to different middle schools, high schools and things like that and perform for the kids. Mm -hmm. And. That was a really awesome experience to see, you know, I don't know. I was young at the time as well, too. So it was kind of cool because, you know, like they could be doing what I'm doing up here, too. Right. You know, you kind of inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was hoping to do. Aiming to do, you know. Um, and yeah, other than that. And then actually through that, I ended up getting uh, connected with a gentleman named Sir Bailey. Um, and he runs this nonprofit called the Four Point Youth Foundation mm -hmm. um, in LA. And he started inviting me to come out and perform at his 
his events that he would put on and and things like that and it, honestly it was it, performing in LA kind of just there was like a snowball effect that happened like started to happen and it happened fairly quickly mm. you know um so you were I, snowballing the way back down to San Diego <laughs> <laughs> well you know I, I go back and forth mm. you know um so uh yeah but I think touching back to your question of like what was my favorite show honestly had to be the UCSD show right it just keeps like it's a like I said it's same analogy it's a snowball it just like over time things have just been getting better and better the performance opportunities have been just just getting bigger and better and like more I'll say this more down the path of the things of where I want to go and the stages that I want to perform on. Right. So what established the optimism? Encouragement from my parents and from the people around me. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like uh, my environment definitely shaped my optimism because I don't know. It's just like getting support is everything, you 100%. know, that can decide, you know, especially from your parents, because if a kid doesn't have support from a certain parent, a lot, you know, they could either get really like, I'm going to do this because, revolt. you know, revolt. But then some of them like just break down. Right. And some of them don't have that, you know. So, you know, having the support from my parents and my family saying, you know, you can do this. Like we support you mm -hmm. has shaped my optimism, you know, and, and they speak words of love and wisdom into me. And so as my community and things of that nature. So mm -hmm. being lifted up is, is, has shaped my optimism, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. yeah. You have siblings? I do. Mm -hmm. I have five sisters. Oh wow! Yeah. Are they? Are any of them into music as well, or just you? Uh, no, I'm, I'm the only one. <laughs> so with with but, that, go but ahead. but I do have sister. Like they're all determined individuals. Like you know, one works in 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 the like she has her own uh, makeup brush cleaner. Um, my other sister, like, is kind of like a, a production coordinator, mm. and she has a whole bunch of other titles, but... <laughs> right, no need to go on all of them. <laughs> yeah, then, you know, my other sisters are running their own businesses. Mm. Um, you know, one does food catering, and she throws down, and she's in Atlanta. Mm. She's a food caterer in, like Atlanta, that, in Atlanta, and she's killing. Mm. She's killing. And then my other sister is an esthetician, and she has her own shop. Mm. Like, And then one of my other sisters joined the Air Force, and she's traveling all over the world. So, you know, and mm. especially, like, having family to like that to just inspire like that's just also shaped. enough. Yeah. Doing what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I'm like, you know. I just, I trust, I trust. They I trust support the your process. Music? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. They do. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing. For sure. That I definitely don't take for granted. Definitely shouldn't. Like, that's that's something to be grateful for. Like you said, the support of your family and right. people you love, that's major. But like you said, major. some people don't even get that at all. Right. From exactly. friends or family. Exactly. Definitely. Exactly. So just to have it from my family, from community, my friends, and just being lifted up is just everything and that's what honestly is like <sighs> kept me who i am and humble and just down to earth because mm -hmm. i i just i want to offer other people opportunity i have a whole idea of how i want to you know really create a strong music Foundation. business here in san diego mm -hmm. you know something that people can like look to and be like yeah san diego they've got they got something like right. that shoot something going on right like you know and because everybody looks to going to la and like you know but it doesn't have to be that way right and there's also a way to do what you want to do in a creative way 
you know, and make money doing what you're doing. Like I'm doing this full time. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. I do music full time. No side jobs. No side jobs. Oh, wow. Okay. No side jobs. Yeah. I have multiple jobs. I have a lot of different things that I do. I MC. I I am an AV technician. I set up shows that are like the Pachanga Arena and things like that. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I want to uh, give this information and all this knowledge that I've gained and give that back to the community. Right. Put, you know, a program and whether it starts as an after program, after school program or curriculum, like have that in high schools so that, you know, when kids are coming home saying this is what I want to do and their parents are telling them, like, I can't support that because how is that like, how is that sustainable? How are you going to make any money? You know, what what if you don't make it as the, the, you know, the superstar, the artist, like, what are you going to do? Right. But there's so many different routes and so many different ways of like making money, but it's just like the, the knowledge and the teaching of that knowledge isn't, you know, isn't necessarily there all the way. So that's why you get, you know, has somebody ever approached you with that scenario? Like, what are you going to do when you don't make it? Man, that just goes in one ear and out the other. I can't even recall a time when somebody no, said no that worry. to me. But yeah. even if they did, I don't remember because I know where I'm going. Like, exactly. I'm not listening. Like, I don't, you know, I'm not tripping off of what anybody says, you know. Mm. So. Are there any other artists in San Diego you're looking forward to working with? If not, no worries. Looking forward to working with. There's so much talent in San Diego that that is like such a hard question. Mm. I can name people off the top of my head that are just dope. I mean, right now, you know, I don't know. I've been focusing on this new EP that I released Mm. called Imagine and um, just focused on that and and getting prepared for things that coming (laughs) that, you know. But there's so much talent in San Diego sure. that I would love to work with. Mm-hmm. So many. So while we still got you on here, is there anybody you wanted to shout out or promote your album or any, anything you got coming up? Anybody? Oh, shoot. Well, go check out my EP, Imagine. It's on all DSPs, all distribution platforms. Um, and uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's. I want to shout out R&D Ice Cream for letting us utilize the space Mm. and um shout out to local black businesses like (laughs) you know shout out moms too shout out moms shout out moms um my biggest supporter Mm. um and yeah yeah this is i mean shoot we had i was like no better place than you know uh, a local black business in a nice neighborhood like as inspiration for people out there like in the hood like we can we can make some stuff happen it's attainable exactly for sure exactly for sure it's been a it's been another episode of the big umbrella podcast that's big with two g's the big umbrella podcast and it's a wrap that's how that goes (laughs) awesome cool that's how that goes let's get some tacos nigga can we really get some tacos (laughs) you trying to get some tacos let's get some tacos nigga